Welcome to Daily Dose Radio, a five-minute devotional podcast studying the Psalms verse by verse. Broadcast from the ever-beautiful Sharonville, Ohio, on the sunny side of Cincinnati. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Daily Dose Radio here in the Bible Bistro. And here in the Bible Bistro today means you're in the dining room of the Bible Bistro. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope that uh, you're enjoying this study in Psalm 109. Of course, we just kicked it off yesterday with the first six verses. Today, we're going to be looking at verses 7 through 12, so if you have your Bible handy, you might want to turn there. Now, I'm not going to read all six verses today, because that would take quite a while to read that, so I'm just going to make comment on the verses. I hope you'll go back later on in the day, if you can't read it right now, and uh, check it out for yourself. So in Psalm 109, we have what we call an imprecatory prayer. This is against the enemy. And so David is praying that something will happen to him because of some what he's done to David. And we started yesterday thinking, well, maybe this is Saul that we're talking about. Compassed him with words of hatred, fought against me without a cause. For my love, they were my adversaries. I gave myself unto prayer. He rewarded me evil for good, those kind of things. And then David begins the imprecatory part, that is, do this to them part, in 6. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. Now, in verses 7 through 12, if you have the authorized version, you're going to see let his, let his, let his, let them. So there's going to be a lot of repetition here about what David wants to happen, and it is not good. Well, you just, you'll see what I mean. Verse 7, when he shall be judged, let him be condemned, let his prayer become sin. So David even begins there. So let him be condemned in his judgment and sin, let his prayer become sin. So even his approach to God, David begins right there and says, don't let him come before you and be accepted. Verse 8, let his days be few and let another take his office. I said yesterday that we're going to go back to the New Testament, and here's one of the places where we'll go back to the New Testament. is here in Acts chapter 1, verse 20. Peter actually quotes from this psalm. He quotes from 109, and he quotes from Psalm 68. In this particular place, he's talking about Judas. Judas had done this to the Lord Jesus. So, once we have this quoted in reference to Judas and Judas' betrayal of Christ, then we go back up here and we look through the reasons why David is writing this prayer. And we say, my goodness, this could be something that the Lord Jesus himself wrote about the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes of his day that were against him. Not all of them were, but uh, the majority of those on the council were. And then when it says, set thou a wicked man over him, of course, we've been speaking generically about those people that have done something, but now it's over him. Of course, now we point ourselves back to Judas. Judas Iscariot is the one that we're talking about. Let his days be few, let another take his office, is what Peter quotes there in Acts chapter 1. And then you can just read on down through here, 9 through 12. Let his children be father, let his children uh, be continually vagabonds, let them seek their bread, uh, let the extortioner catch all that he has, let strangers spoil his labor, let there be none to extend mercy unto him, let uh, neither let there be any favor to his fatherless children. His fatherless children are actually mentioned in here twice. And we know that Judas killed himself. So if Judas killed himself, then we know that his children were fatherless, his wife was a widow, and then all the rest, certainly that happened to them as well. So you see the imprecatory nature here. If this is Judas, which, of course, Peter identifies this as Judas, that this psalm was written to prophesy about what Judas did, then that throws the entire psalm in a different light. This is at the cross. This is during the Passion. So now we're going to have to look with very keen eyes at the rest of this psalm and see what else we can find that might point us to the cross and to what was going on during the Passion of our Savior. I hope you'll join me tomorrow. We'll take up that quest on Daily Dose Radio. Thanks for listening to Daily Dose Radio. I'm David Smith. The music today has been performed by the Bluegrass Experiment. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you next time on Daily Dose Radio.